I's dotted and T's crossed. Um, I, I can say right now I'm in favor of your plan and I haven't finished my comments and I was going to say I love the fact what you've done with the additional buffers. I'm not trying to beat you up. Well, clearly there are no trees there. I, 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 know, I will grade it to the design and loam and seed it. Okay, that's all I was asking. I wasn't trying to tell you what to put there. Thank you. Can I ask when you intend to plant the hemlocks in the buffer? Probably mm -hmm. mid-June, next spring. I can be specific. If you'd like to plant it on a specific date, they will be in by that date. Okay. So you wouldn't object to a condition that's perhaps later in the year. Um, I think those are my only comments. We have other comments from the board. Janet, Mr. Wilcox, why don't we let their new fellow? Okay. Uh, I'd like to direct a question to Mr. Kamala. To the north of units 15 and 16, there's indicated a stone retaining wall. There appears to be a uh, wooded knoll in that area. To the north of unit 16, right there. Okay. Uh, one of the other plans says stone retaining wall if required. Uh, the grading plan as drawn now indicates about a six-foot cut to achieve the turnaround and the guest parking space in front of that unit. Could you explain what the intention would be there? The Jim may be able to give you more detail, but I, I believe from what I saw on the site that that is probably very much ledgy and uh, that that may be just an exposed ledge face there and not really a retaining wall. There's very little soil and it's, it's I think probably a six foot cut and ledge. Is that right, Jim? Yeah. It's actually less than six feet. Uh, it's closer to the, when you go out there and take a look at it, if you <coughs> measure the, the two distances, you'll find it considerably less than six feet. It may in fact show up six feet on, the, on that topo drawing. Yes, it does. It, it may, but that's not what is in fact there. Uh, there is ledge in that area. Whether the ledge comes up to the top of the ground, I don't know. I have not exposed it at this point. But the intent would be in all of those areas where there is ledge to make that face as steep as possible and use it as a natural stone wall. If we have large areas that we, where we have to make a grade change, then stone wall may be the appropriate way to do it. And it may not be. It depends on how the ground digs out when you take it out. Most of them are done except that one, though. Well, if, if there is no ledge there, uh, stone retaining wall, if necessary, stone wall would not be necessary if the trees in that area were cleared and grade was changed. In other words, is that the stone retaining wall would not be necessary if that area were lowered in elevation and the trees removed on that knoll? You're it saying you will, you, will, you will keep the trees. Uh, the extent of the cut was another item which I was wondering about because it practically produ it produces a s almost a level driveway for units 15 and 16, which can also be a problem. Uh, has any concern, any uh, attention been paid to uh, and the to uh, directing drainage around the north and south of units 15 and 16, or raising raising unit 15 and 16 slightly to give it a positive pitch down to the catch basin of the circle? Or? Well, we had at one time proposed to raise that. We've gone back to the original design and left that as is. Um, as far as the driveway um, drainage goes, there is a separate plan that shows the, uh, the actual drainage around the building. And essentially, the, all the buildings are, are pretty much similar in that there's um, drainage swales that, that take surface water out around both sides. Um, in this case, both, both sides of the building will drain in this direction or this direction. The north the, side uh, does, but the south the side does not. Does that mean that there'd be more grading to the south and into that tree area in order to produce a drainage soil there? Well, the, the grading is, that's shown on here is, is up to the, uh, the tree line. You know, the, uh, the, the heavier solid lines are the proposed grades, and where they terminate, there's a little hash mark on the end, so that that's the extent of the grading we're proposing. And they all indicate elevation 74 on this plan? Yeah, it's, 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 it's relatively flat at that point, once you get there. <laughs> the fire alarm? We'll guess up. <laughs> I guess um, as far as drainage goes, all I can say is that the driveways are crowned so that the, the, the drainage will sheet off of the paved areas and uh, around the buildings. 
Um, it, it shows a 74 contour. These are only two foot contours, so that what, what we're dealing with is, is a, like micro relief. Um, there'll be fine grading around all the buildings that will correspond to the detail at the bottom of the sheet. If you look at the lower left hand corner, everything drains away from the foundations, away from the buildings. When you do two foot contour grading, you can't really show that level of detail. You know, a lot happens in two feet around the, adjacent to a building, but um, that's something that when Jim builds each unit, he will take care of that in the fine grading around each foundation so that there won't be any issue of ponding water in the lawns or anything like that. Okay. Um, that's all I'm saying. We have other comments? Janet, you were warming up for something? I could tell. Yes, Mr. Kula, I wondered if you and your client had discussed putting in trees that were taller than four to five feet. Four to five feet usually means four feet to me, and I must say that uh, the hemlocks, and I know that Mr. Hinman was not responsible for the first part of the Cape Woods project, but there are some Canadian hemlocks, I believe, along the right-hand side as you go into the the entrance to the project and um, those I measured them against myself and they look like the you know the top wisps were six feet but uh, I have to tell you that in terms of something that I would consider to be a, a really a good visual buffer that really didn't do it and I wondered if there were some way of starting the vegetation in a much more substantial way so that we weren't going to be waiting for 20 years to um, to have trees that were quote unquote real trees. Has there been any thought about that? Uh, I guess my sense is that, that Jim is, you know, planning to put in what the plans had called for and uh, we never really did discuss anything larger than that. I guess, you know, I don't know what his thoughts are on that. Well, you, you, you committed me to five to six footers on the ten that were planning. <laughs> Did I say that? I'm sorry. Four to five, and I will yield and give the five to six footers on those ten. My intent would be to put in what's called for. But I guess the question is what we're going to call for. And I guess I'd like to su suggest that we call for more than six feet. Mr. Etzel? I didn't raise my hand. I, just I can hear you. I can hear you. You always talk after her. It's just like a ping pong table here. I, know. Um, <laughs> I appreciate the, all the efforts. And, and this, uh, Cape Elizabeth is a, a very buffery town. Um, the ordinance deals mostly with buffering in uh, change of use between business zones and residential zones. We, we certainly try to comply with um, buffering between residential uses. Um, I would just state my opinion. Uh, the, the, the applicant is uh, offering to plant, I think, 44, correct me if I'm wrong, around 40 plus trees uh, with a consultation of, of, uh, of the abutters. Uh, and I guess that means including all abutters uh, who wish to divvy up that number of, of trees. Um, I'm not sure that there's any benefit of, of trying to exceed six feet or five feet. Uh, I think what you give up in height, you give up in survivability. Once you get into a larger tree, trying to get a whole big root bulb to, to, to actually take, uh, there are advantages of planting smaller trees. Um, I, I'm not trying to, to lessen the buffering. Of, uh, I'm, I'm just looking for the benefit of, of uh, the effort that, that uh, the applicant is putting forward. And I think, uh, as this one board member, I, I see that uh, that many trees are uh, willing to uh, consult with the abutters um, will will suffice and, and, and provide a, an ample buffer at the stated heights. That's all I have for questions. Thank you. Comments. Steve, anything to say? <coughs> uh, my particular comments um, actually pretty much echo Mr. Etzel's. I think that the developer has a good idea of what we're looking for here, which is true preservation, um, particularly in view of the aftermath of what's happened in phase one or the completed section of this. Um, his um, volunteering to plant up to six foot trees is, I think, is generous, and I, working with the abutters as to how to do it is, I think, very nice. I do 
also know the hemlocks that they, they you know after once they get settled in and they have you know they'll grow a foot a year anyway and then you'll be cutting them down but um, I hope not how dare you I won't cut these trees down um, and I'll be glad to see the project finished it's been a mess for a long time we have any other comment on the in which case do we have a motion um, Chair, I have a brief comment and a motion to make. Yes. Um, I would like to say again, because it hasn't been clear, I am glad you came forward with these proposed changes. I think it will be a better project. But please don't blame the board when we do our job, and we had to do our job because you decided to make these changes. Um, I propose the following motion for the board to consider. Findings of fact. One, the James Development Corporation is requesting grading changes to the previously approved Cape Woods condominium development, which requires review under section 16-2-5 of the subdivision ordinance. Two, the planning board held a public hearing of the proposed on the proposed amendments on November 17, 1992. Three, the subdivision plan changes substantially the subdivision plan changes substantially comply with section 16-2-5 of the subdivision ordinance. Decision Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of James Development for subdivision amendments to Cape Woods, a 22-unit condominium developed located off of Mitchell Road, be granted with the following conditions. One, existing trees on the site shall be preserved whenever practi practicable and shall be protected as described in the tree preservation note on the revised landscape plan. Two, Note 7 on the revised drainage plan shall be revised to indicate that all units will be drained to sump pumps instead of gravity foundation drains. 3. The center of the cul-de-sac shall be loamed and seeded. 4. The Canadian hemlock shown on the plan shall be planted no later than September 1993. Have a second? Second. Any discussion on the motion is read? <coughs> there being no discussion, all those in favor of the motion is read? Signify, raise your right hand. Opposed? An abstention? The motion passes 4-4, four, four, the abstention of Ms. McKay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good luck. Everybody's going to leave before the hot public hearing on road standards. Y'all should stay. <laughs> thanks. No? No, thanks. Too bad. Yeah. Joe's here. We've got some. <laughs> you wanted it live. It's like a basketball game. It's always better live. <laughs> Okay, the next item on tonight's agenda under other business is the road standards ordinance amendments. We have draft amendments to discuss and we also have a public hearing on the road standard ordinance revisions. Uh, I will try to briefly summarize what we're doing here um, before I open the public hearing. A number of years ago, in fact it was about two years ago, we took a look at the road standards for our town and came to the conclusion that what we had in our ordinances was not necessarily always what we ended up getting when they were built according to the standards. Uh, we took on at that point a two-year review of, I, I would almost say, nearly every road in Cape Elizabeth looking at it with a view to the type of use it had, its width, um, setbacks, shoulders, um, esplanades, sidewalks, bikeways, uh, practically everything you can imagine thinking about about roads we thought about and have worked very hard in the last probably nine months or so on actually drafting a new ordinance which we will be proposing to the town council if we approve it as in its final revision tonight, it will go to the town council. Um, with that, unless our 
town planner can think of something else to add to it. That's philosophically where we are. Um, it's a not a terribly long bit of work we've done, but it's it's very uh, very inclusive. In which case, I'll open it to a public hearing. Do we have anyone that wants to speak at the public hearing? <laughs> you don't want to speak. Okay. No one wishing to speak. The public hearing is closed, and I will open the discussion to the board. Madam Chair, sure. I just want to say, after two years of working on this, um, I never thought that nobody would come. I know. <laughs> but then again, it was, it was difficult for us to get through two years of uh, discussion on this. Just, just for the record, there yes. were notices sent to um, developers currently and recently approved subdivisions in the town, as well as to two homeowners associations that I've had addresses for. Thank you. Maureen, including the Coalfield Association? Fine. I think they're just going to wait to watch it on TV. Okay. Does the board have anything to specific to say, or I just sort of go through this? I have lots of. I know you always do, <laughs> but I'm happy to do it page by page. Judy, why don't you? I rely on you all the time for this. <laughs> okay. Again, um, I, I'm not meaning to apologize, but again, as we go through it and it, as the format is clarified more, I think it's clearer to see deficiencies and that's I don't feel like I keep bringing up new ones it's just that the form lets me see mistakes or omissions um, I'm just looking at the first page of the memo right now um, I'm not sure if I need to say anything right here I guess on Maureen's third paragraph under the discussion section she asks a question about a specific section and I'd like to comment that on that right now and then when we get to it I'll comment further if necessary she asks if we should delete a particular standard which I believe was talking about um, Judy may I interrupt you for sure. something Maureen has just brought something up that I'd like her to explain be frankly because I I didn't understand it as she whispered it to me um, sure Maureen why don't you just explain this yeah just just to assist me in understanding understanding what the board's exact wishes are for this evening if if the board generally feels that this is close enough that you're going to be going to recommend it to the council then any amendment that's proposed by a member should probably be approved by consensus so that when you make a final motion I'm I'm certain in what amendments have been made um, if, if you probably think that you're not going to be recommending it to the council tonight but rather going back to a workshop then um, there's no need for this consensus adoption and I'll just be making notes on some of the changes or other issues you want to have addressed for the workshop. Okay, can I say something here? It, it seems to me yes, I, I've made a bunch of notes going through this. I'm sure others have as well. It seems to me to make more sense to take this back to workshop without going through all of this tonight and when we come back have it the way we want it and then present it in a public forum to be recommended to the council. So I, I would be in favor of making a motion at this point in the evening to table it to the next workshop. Janet? That makes a lot of sense to me. I don't have that many comments on it. So I think if, I, if we only had a minimal amount that we ought to go ahead and discuss it and see if we couldn't push it out the door. But if we know for sure that we are going to be talking about it at some length, I don't see any reason not to just go ahead and go for workshop. I guess I'm a little surprised that we have anything to talk about at any length, and I'm not trying to, to squelch discussion. <laughs> well, Judy wasn't at the last um, workshop meeting, for starters. I had sent comments to Maureen. Mm. A lot of them were addressed, and some I just wanted to make sure. Right. Well, why, would, why don't we just quickly go through and... and, and uh, um, with the idea of going then, back then to Then if work. it's a major point, then, then the chair can ask for consensus and either nod or fall out of a chair or do something indicate. Uh, well, Steve says he's got some serious, I mean, this. <clears throat> well, it's just a lot of little things, and it just seems to me that it's a very imperfect um, document at this point. 
I think in which case we should go back to workshop. I agree. Uh, this is th this uh, I, this I envision as a place where you have just two or three minor details that if we can consens give a consensus on it, we'll send it along. Otherwise, let's go back and work it off some more. The work only reason I would disagree, and if, if you just feel uncomfortable really hashing out details, and all our forums are public but because it's televised, but I hate to lose this time, go to workshop, make revisions. Maureen tries to incorporate them as best she can. It comes back to us next time, and I raise my hand and say I've got comments. So get your way, comments out the, the next. Get them all. <laughs> but maybe she can race through in five minutes right now. Well, I, I'll. Why don't we? T why don't we take a few minutes? We will do this with the idea that we are going back to workshop, so there need not be consensus on all changes. Yeah. Um, okay. Why don't we work That's on it idea. for uh, 10 or 15 minutes or so? Then we'll close the meeting. Um, get home before we slide home, and uh, we'll bring it up again at the at the workshop. Okay, I'd feel very comfortable just very briefly indicating basically. Then why don't you do it? Fine. I'm well, going to start then on page two of the actual draft. We need to revise section 16-3-1L. The, that lang there's language in there that specifies that there is a requirement for a 22-foot easement for a private road as opposed to a 50-foot right away. On down where section 16.3.4a is crossed out, I think when we get to that area, section 16-3-4a needs to be amended to reflect where the new right-of-way width requirements are located in the ordinance. Um, I question, I would like to have it explained to me at the workshop why subsection B is being deleted. I'm going to save that question for later. You're talking about 34A, uh, 34B? I was, subsection A, about two-thirds down, is referring to another section, which I don't remember if we have on these amendments, and I've just noted that we do um, need to amend that section later in the ordinance, 16-3-4A. Um, as I said, I, I, I would like an explanation on subsection B. On the road classification standards table, I know I missed a lot of this, and I will discuss it in more detail, but I would like to make sure that these minimum esplanades we may end up with under arterial and collectors will, in fact, support street trees. Um, I think we need to work with some of those numbers so they do still add up appropriately to the respective right-of-ways. We probably need notations dealing with the dead-end street in excess of 1,000 feet because the minimum pavement width increases on local roads. That should be noted here. And I would like to discuss a little bit more about shoulders and on-street parking versus on-street parking and esplanades, just something to examine. No comments on page four. On page five, I have a question about the border section that was deleted. Um, I, I just don't really understand what it meant, why we're deleting it, and that's something that could easily be explained in workshop. <coughs> The street tree section looks good now, and I do recommend that those standards be developed soon on what the size of trees and species, but not with this. On the dead end streets, I, I don't know if we want to get into that now, but I, I was thinking that the qualifications and adequate secondary access should be spelled out with respect to width and construction standards the right of access year-round maintenance, and then we wouldn't have had the problem perhaps with the earlier application before us, and maybe we want to separate the two. And number 11, I imagine you discussed this in detail at the workshop. I still have great concerns with the private roads saying that they have to comply with all town road standards because I think the way we've written it, that all private roads not, would not only have to have the same right of way and the widths, they'd have to have the same construction standards exempting, of course, the paving, but they would have to have curbing, they'd have to have underground drainage, they'd have to have monumentation, they'd have to have street trees and sidewalks and esplanades, and is that the board's intent for private roads? And if not, I'd rather spell out what we require of them instead of what we exempt them from. On page six, 
drainage again i apologize if that was resolved i still question them whether all streets have to have underground drainage or how often we might grant exceptions to that on the clearing section the language seems a little bit awkward on the title of that m d o t document could be clarified the limits of clearing for the sixty six foot right of way on a rural connector i think i understand the intent i don't think the language is really clear on the eight foot and perhaps that can be clarified exactly where those eight feet i know where they are but it it could read better page seven just a comment on the setbacks we have an exception under the setback table saying that all setbacks must be at least twenty feet from the right of way it's probably not appropriate now but i could certainly see wanting to revisit that at least with the town center stuff and those are my only comments and thank you for bearing with me steve i have a fair number of the same but not maybe as many I actually i've gotten lost as to where she was and where i am i i feel confused i really think it needs to go back to work so i don't feel comfortable going forward any further at this point okay do you have any other comments from the board could i recommend to mr parker's that if you have written comments that you could give them to the planner and she could work with those before the workshop that'd be fine okay Tom? Yes, I think the, you know, driving around town lately in terms of, I'm referring to page three, road classification standards table, um, where we have unpaved shoulders and we've endeavored to keep the roads narrow, for example, example feeder roads, which would be similar to uh, Broad Cove Road, is that mm -hmm. correct? Uh, that there's a need to maintain a foot. If you think of the white line as you go down Shore Road, for example, a foot beyond that edge so that the pavement doesn't break up and fall away. Uh, so that the where we show an un, um, traveled way with shoulders, it's, again, a little confusing to me, but are we saying under Feeder Road, I want to be clear that the travel way... Um, since, since under, let's take the feeders, uh, for example, if, if we were to have a paved shoulder, um, there's, there, I guess the issue is no curbing versus curbing, realistically, which means if there's no curbing, then the shoulder is unpaved. But all, all I'm saying is that in, under the feeder road, under traveled way with shoulders paved, that, uh, again, I think this is a total width of pavement that we're talking about here, not just mm -hmm. the shoulder, that that column would, would appropriately say 26 feet or read 26 feet. So it would reflect your one foot of? One foot on either side. And I'm not, I'm not suggesting that it's from an engineering standpoint, of which I'm not one, that it's appropriate to be one foot. I'm saying that there's some distance beyond that edge that ought to be maintained for pavement integrity. And I think that would hold true through Rural Connector as well. Mr. Emery, could I interrupt? Mm -hmm. When I had commented about needing to look at shoulders, how I've read this and I've raised the issue before is that all streets require underground drainage unless we waive it. That's and if a street has underground happened. drainage, it has to have curbing and requiring, for the most part, gravel shoulders. And I just don't see how that all works out with catch basins and gravel mm -hmm. shoulders and curbing. And I think we have to clarify the intent yeah. there. I agree. <clears throat> Be right with you. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, this looks like it goes back to uh, first. Do you have some? No? Looking at me? First. Getting ready to move to a journey. That's exactly what was next on my mind. As soon as I said we'll see this all back up the first Tuesday of December, in which case? So moved. Fine. Do you want to move to adjourn? Yeah.
No, we need a motion to table this first. Oh, we need to. Oh, indeed. Why don't you make it, Tom? Okay. I move that we table this until the uh, next workshop session. Second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Raise your right hands. Opposed? Unanimous. We have a motion to adjourn if there's no other business. Well, do we? Is there any other business? No? In which case do I have a motion? Yes. Everyone saw the tentative planning board agenda, which listed the regular planning board meeting in December as December 15th. Mm -hmm. I had a question. Um, never mind. We, just we formally welcomed Mark earlier. Yes. Didn't we? Do, do, would it be appropriate for... Um, him to just either say who he is and what he does and where he lives or so we all sort of know who he is. Okay. Oh, I'd be happy to. All at once. Can I turn the microphone off? <laughs> Why don't we wait till we're through? Why don't we adjourn the meeting with someone make a seconded? All those in favor, raise your right hands. All of us. Yes. It's unanimous. Good night. Thank you.